Hi, I'm Tim O'Connell with Rescue42. I'm here today to give a deep, detailed discussion on the FirstNet CRD. CRD stands for Compact Rapid Deployable, and it, in this case for FirstNet, this is a true FirstNet Band 14 cell tower, or COW, cell on wheels. Before I start to discuss this, we really need to find out how these units are transported. So stick with me for a minute. We're going to step away, take a look at our How It Works video, and we'll be right back. From your indoor storage area to the final destination, the SatRunner can easily maneuver in and out of elevators and through doorways to get to your vehicle. Once you're at the back of your vehicle, turn the crank handle to raise the SatRunner. Then, insert and secure the hitch adapter to your trailer hitch. Make sure you remove the license plate from your vehicle and attach it to the SatRunner. You'll then align the mounting pin to the hitch adapter. Don't forget to connect the SatRunner's running lights with the 4-pin connector. Once it's aligned, lower the SatRunner down onto the hitch adapter. You'll want to give the SatRunner a small push to lock it into the transport position. Then, raise the wheels off the ground by continuing to turn the crank handle. To provide more clearance, remove the pins and rotate the wheels up above the lower frame. The SatRunner is equipped with license plate illumination and ultra-bright LED running lights. The SatRunner is securely locked onto your vehicle, allowing you to transport it off-road to remote locations. To unload the SatRunner off your vehicle, turn the crank handle to lower wheels down to the ground. Once it's off your vehicle, continue to lower the SatRunner all the way down in the fully collapsed position. Now that you've seen how these units get delivered on any trailer hitch off the ground without lifting, let's take a look at the features of the FirstNet CRD, why they're there, and what they do for your organization. This is designed to be a communication system that not only provides true FirstNet Band 14 cellular service to about a two mile bubble or one mile of range, but it's also designed to give you internet services to restore your services within a building and as a Wi-Fi hotspot to do the same job, but over Wi-Fi. It's designed to backhaul or go back to the internet in multiple different ways, including with high-speed satellite. So let's take a look at the major components. First of all, starting top to bottom, we have our high-speed auto-acquire uh, Viasat satellite system that is going to give you between 18 and 30 meg service, depending on where you are and atmospheric conditions. We'll talk about how this deploys in a few minutes. You'll see also that there are four stabilizers on the corners that are quickly used to stabilize the FirstNet CRD and make sure it's got a good stable platform for the satellite to work on. We'll be inside the electronics component pretty quickly. In here is our power supply where we have a Honda 2200 and an extended fuel supply. Up here, still down in its non-deployed position, we have our high gain FirstNet Band 14 cell antennas that will be extended and raised when we turn into a cell tower. So let's take a look inside the waterproof, insulated, heated and air conditioned electronics section. So here we have the brains of the unit. Starting from the bottom, we have our, under, our power supply unit, which we call a PCM power control module. This controls all of our alarm systems, all the power distribution, and also has charging ports for your computer and your USB devices. Moving up, we have a cradle point IBR1700, which is providing the network services and managing the backhaul priorities. In this section is the satellite control portion, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And at the top here behind this plate is the Band 14 FirstNet cell radio that's giving you five watts of cellular power, which is going to be transmitted through the high gain antennas. Down here in blue is a 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate smart battery, which is controlling our reserve power. And if we lose power, we don't lose continuity. And in this unit up here, this is a waterproof non-pass through heater and air conditioner that's going to give us environmental controls and also remove humidity from inside the enclosure. So let's look at some of the specifics of the power control module. Left to right, we have our master power switch. 
a Bluetooth battery management and communication system. These are alarm controls and charging controls. We provide both interior and exterior scene lights that you can use for convenience in the field. This identifies our incoming power supply and this is our cooling and heating section down here. One of the important things to understand is how easy it is to use the FirstNet CRD. It is intuitive, incredibly simple to use because we don't always know the qualification level of the person that's going to be deploying it. There are quick start guides that quickly take you through setup and demo, but it is easy as turning on the master power, turning on the satellite power, which is going to start the pre-process for the satellite control system. And once the computer screen goes through its diagnostics and gets ready, as we'll see in a minute, a green button will show up. You touch the green button and the satellite will automatically deploy and bring IP into the unit. At the same time, when we turn on the master power, our cradle point has started up and it's going through its process to look for any of the four sources of internet that we can get. It can be an ethernet input, it can be Wi-Fi as WAN. It can be LTE with up to two modems and up to four SIM cards. And finally, if none of those are available, our non-terrestrial solution using the satellite 22,000 miles up there to provide our services. Moving down the CRD, we get to the satellite unit and the satellite board. This entire assembly is removable and you can actually move this entire assembly, put it onto a rooftop, for example, to allow better line of sight in an urban environment or to have low visibility when you're in a contested type of environment. This is our antenna deck system, which I'll talk about from the other end. This box contains the ICU, which is inverter charger UPS system, which not only provides and monitors the power input, but it also kicks the battery in if we lose AC power and then does typical UPS functions. In this cage section, we have our Honda 2200 and our fuel system, which we'll look at in a minute. This section is called the antenna deck, and it'll be discussed in a minute as well. Let's talk about the antenna deck. There are 12 antennas on this deck. The brick carries seven antennas, four Wi-Fi, two LTE, and one of our GPS units that we use for the cradle point. This is the GPS unit that we use to feed the cell radio. The two large white antennas are LTE backhaul antennas that are used by the cradle point router to reach back to a cell tower for connectivity to the internet. And the large gray antennas are for us putting out a large Wi-Fi bubble to almost a thousand feet. This is the light that we use for the alarm system. It's a strobe that if we have an internal alarm that performs, not only will you get an audible alarm and a Bluetooth notification, but you'll get a visual strobe alarm as well telling you that there's a problem. On the mast are the two high gain LTE antennas that we connect to the FirstNet cellular radio that provide our around two mile bubble of true FirstNet band 14 cell service. These are in their stowed position. I'll show you how those get raised in a minute. Going into our generator compartment, we have a Honda 2200 tag, which means it gives you Bluetooth connectivity about its status. We have a custom made six gallon fuel tank, aluminum, and we have an auto feed system that automatically moves the fuel from the fuel tank into the generator, which gives you a continuous 60 hour runtime without having to refuel this unit. These are removable. They can either be run in the unit or they can be taken out and run outside of a building or even on a rooftop, depending on what your situation is. Moving to the back of the FirstNet CRD, we'll see the mast that gives us the great coverage for the FirstNet bubble. This is a five meter mast. It's fiberglass. Both of those factors are designed to help protect a user who might accidentally be trying to raise these into energized power lines. This would be its normal stowed position. The whole head can come off and be carried separately. To deploy this, you just simply pull up the antennas The coaxes, which are normally here, which go down to the antenna deck, have been removed for our demonstration today. And then simply raise the mast manually until it's up to its full position. As we go by this side of the generator compartment, note that the controls to operate, start, and stop, and choke the generator are open. 
tucked away in here, hidden for protection purposes and under a rain shield, is our power entry panel, or PEP. This has two AC inlets, one for shore power and the other one for generator power. The generator power is neutral ground bonded for electrical safety purposes. It also has two ethernet connectors here, which can be used either for bringing ethernet into the unit or sending it out, and an auxiliary 120 port so we can use this to power future optional devices that you may wish to add. Looking at the back of the waterproof electronics console, We see here the back of the FirstNet small cell radio with all of its connections. This is simply the back of our storage drawer. This is our 120 volt uh, distribution strip. We use only standard 120 plugs and they go into the front side of this for protection. What that means is any unit in this piece that has to get removed and replaced you can simply unplug and plug back in. It's not hardwired in for convenience and to let you do troubleshooting. Here you see our, our patch panel, which is giving you full control all over the network systems that are in here. Everything in here is color coded, so you can easily track down where things are going. And there's master cards that tell the color coding pattern and give you your master mapping. Here on the back of the PCM, you can see our fuse panels, our breaker panels, all of our different controls that we use to give electrical safety to the system. Of course, the back side of the battery and then other controls that we have. Everything here is wide open and accessible. This is a standard 19 inch rack, which gives you full control over modification. You can add equipment if you choose to alter it and you introduce other different types of equipment that you might be wanting to do for future growth. Notice that these signal and power entry panels are separate plates from the body of the enclosure. You see the screws that attach these to the waterproof gaskets. This gives us the ability to accommodate future technology improvements or changes that might be needed to be made to the systems to accommodate your needs. For example, you may need to have fiber optic cable feeding in here. We can add fiber optic holes. The nice part about this is, is that once we decide what needs to go here, we can laser cut a new plate, literally send it to you, you can pop the old plate out, pop a new plate in, and be adapting your system to new technologies and changes. Notice the series of 3 8 inch female threaded fittings that don't have anything attached. We call this our OxPod system. And what this is for is future developments that may come up for us to attach auxiliary pods or other types of equipment out in this section, and then we can modify or adapt our signal entry or power entry panels to bring inputs and outputs into the system to use out there. Things that we might put out there, for example, are different types of radio systems, radio over IP systems, Internet of Things systems, uh, sensor packages, many, many other things that you either you as the customer can customize these for your own use, or we may develop for future needs that would be applied here that could be upgraded to your systems in the field. So as I've shown you in this brief video, the capabilities of this unit are exceptional. For the first time, FirstNet customers, whether you're primary or extended primary, can own your own independently deployed satellite system backhauled cow or cell on wheels in band 14 true FirstNet with about a one mile range, which gives you an exceptional ability to cover most incident sites, to support yourself if there's internet outages and all those sorts of things. This is also used for business continuity. You can run an ethernet cable in, bring your business back up and working or your offices back up and working on a loss of internet. You can use those to support other command vehicles. It really just gives you a massive amount of capabilities. Thank you very much for spending some time with me today and learning more about the FirstNet CRD Compact Rapid Deployable.